Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 10 from Module 4, Writing and, ex writing and Expanding Multiplication Expressions. All right, so before I go any further, um, we're now going to start multiplying variables. So let me explain. If you have a number, 2, and you have a an unknown, like two um, tickets, for example, and you want to know how much tickets are, or if they're $2 per ticket, you don't know how many tickets you sell, then you use a variable to replace the number of tickets, and that's going to vary, and you multiply that. So there's different representations of multiplication that we've used in the past. For example, if I multiply two numbers, I would say 5 times 7. I could also write 5 with a dot in between 7, which means 5 times 7. I could also write it so that each number was in its own parentheses, parentheses 5, parentheses 7. But I can't simply just write 5 and a 7 next to it because that's 57. Okay, see this? So there are multiple representations of multiplication that we can use with numbers. Now that we're getting into variables, I no longer want to use an x because if I'm using a variable x, meaning a certain missing item, a diagram or a problem, and x is my variable, I don't want to say 2 times x. That looks like 2 times x times x, which is 2x squared. And it is just going to create all kinds of problems with solving simplifying the expression. So we want to get away from using x's. So if I'm going to use a variable or two variables, a times b, and now that we know variables are letters, this looks like a times x times b. So instead of using a times b with an x, I would use a dot b. Or if there's just variables, we don't even need the dot. I can just simply write a b. That is representing multiplication. Or again, I could say A in parentheses. A in parentheses. Okay, so these are all terms we could use instead of AX for times. Okay, so let's move on. This here says to write each expression using the fewest number of symbols and characters. Use math terms to describe the expressions and parts of the expressions. Okay, so this is 6 times b. So, again, we don't want to use the x anymore. So that could simply be written 6 b. Okay, in this problem, it's 4 times 3 times h. And we don't know what h is, so we can't come up with a solution to this. But we can simplify I can take the 4 times 3 and call that 12. I'll put the h next to it, and we don't need a dot between numbers and variables, so we can just take 12. Okay. C is 2 times 2 times 2 times a times b. Well, there's three like terms here, three numbers. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8 times a times b. Since we simplify the numbers, we don't we don't use the x's anymore. It is just simply 8 times a times b, right? It's written as 8ab. D, we have a number 5. We have a number 3. We have m. We have p. We can multiply the two numbers, get 15. And then m, p. Can reorder these any way we want. That's called the commutative property of multiplication. Five times three is fifteen, and three times five is fifteen. So we can rearrange all the law. Now we have a number one times g times w. Well, in this case, we don't. We could write one g w, but if you go back up here, it says write each expression using the fewest number of symbols. Okay. So anything times one is itself one times 5 equals 5. So the 1 is not necessary. 1 times g is simply g. 
So instead of writing one GW, I can simply write GW and disregard this one times because that's multiplicative identity. Okay. All right, so what are these things called? We have names for everything in math. And if we just have a number all by itself, it's called a constant. This number is not by itself. It's being multiplied by a variable, so I'm going to call that a coefficient. Okay, so the number is the coefficient, and the variable, the, I mean, letter is the variable. So a number that we multiply a variable by is called a coefficient. Okay, now it says to expand multiplication expressions. We will rewrite the expressions by including the dot back into the expression. So 5g means 5 times g. 7abc means 7 times a times b times c. Twelve G we can do it a couple of different ways. We could say simply twelve times G, or if I want to factor that, simplify it down to prime numbers. Okay, so if I take twelve and do a factor tree, twelve is two times six. 6 is 2 times 3, so 12 is 2 times 2 times 3, so this could also be written as 2 times 2 times 3 times still is equal to 12. 3 is prime, 8 is not prime, so we can do a factor tree for 8, which is 2 times 4. 4 is 2 times 2, so we have 2 times 2 times 2. Is eight. So I can rewrite this as 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times h. So this 8 is these three twos, the 3 is just moved after them, and h is at the end. 7 is prime, 9 is 3 times 3. So I can write this as 3 times 3, that represents my 9, times 7, because it's prime, times g times h. Example 3. Find the product of 4f times 7g. I can multiply my coefficients, but I can't multiply f and g, so 4 times, so I could write 4 times 7 times f times g, and then combine my like terms and say 28f. Multiply 3DE times 9YZ. First, I'll rewrite it in order and put like terms together. So I have a 3 times 9 times D times E times Y times C. Always put your variables in alphabetical order and then multiply the numbers together. 9 times 3 is 27, and then just D, E, Y, Z. Okay, so 27 D, E, Y, Z. Now it says double the product of 6y and 3bc. Okay, 6y and 3bc. So I'm first I'm going to rewrite that as 6 times y times 3 times b times c. So if I double that product, then we're first going to take the product of this, and I'll rewrite this as 3 times 6 times B times C times Y. All I did was rearranged it in order, least to greatest in numbers, least to greatest in letters in the alphabet, alphabetical order. And then 6 times 3, or 3 times 6 is 18 B, C, Y. And to double that, you just multiply it by 2, now I have 36 B C.
Okay, that is the end of lesson 10. Go do your problems.